Christ, when he was asked what, uh, what he was to do uh, concerning taxes, then Matthew 22, just ch- four chapters later, verse 21, when he was asked, should we pay taxes to Caesar? Look at his response. He says, give to Caesar the things that are Caesar's and give to God the things that are God's, creating already a separation of church and state. That which we give to Caesar belongs in this side. That which we give to the church belongs over here. The two are separated and neither the twain should meet. And for the last 2,000 years, we've tried to do just that. No, not always so great. Sometimes we have failed. But certainly that has been the model, that has been the paradigm that we have tried to work towards. Because whenever the church and state are brought together, the state then corrupts the church. And that's where we've seen our dark periods of our history. And it is that that I look at today when I look at the two different covenants and I say, it's the later covenant, it's the covenant of Jesus Christ that I follow which has a totally different paradigm, which has totally different influences. And of course, in that model, I'm not permitted to use violence. Not at all. There's no need for violence anymore. But that's not to say that there is not violence in the, in the Bible. There is violence in the Bible. And almost all of it is in the Old Testament. We've got to deal with the violence in the Old Testament. And I'll put my hands up and I will admit, that I'll be the first to admit, Shabir, that the violence in the Old Testament is much greater than the violence in the Quran. And I'll put my hands up and I will admit, that I'll be the first to admit, Shabir, that the violence in the Old Testament is much greater than the violence in the Quran. I'll be the first to admit that. It is much greater. It's horrendous violence. In Joshua, chapter 6, verse 20, where Joshua commands the people to go in and kill all men, women, and children, even live animals. We don't see references like that in the Quran. And so it troubles us, those of us who follow the paradigm of Jesus Christ, when we read and we look back in the Old Testament, because we say, where is the peace that is there? And what are we going to do with the violence of the Old Testament vis-a-vis the peace that we see in the person of Jesus Christ, in the gospel of Jesus Christ? What are we going to do with the horrendous verses, not only surrounding what happened in Jericho, what happened a few chapters later in the city of Ai? Okay, so um, the reason why I don't believe... Obviously, that Muhammad is a role model. One of the reasons is because he allowed the killing of innocent people. That's one of the reasons he allowed innocent people, not people he was in war with, but people he, he killed innocent people. I'm going to give you some surahs and some um, some ayahs to explain what, exactly what I mean, um, and also um, from the hadiths. Okay, so let's start with the um, the Bayan Karaiza tribe. Okay. Here, we speak, uh, let me see, okay, so, okay, let's see, see what Iban, Iban Ishaq, um, who is it? Iban Ishaq, page 450. Iban Ishaq. Okay. Iban Ishaq. I might have pronounced the name correctly, it's correct. A number of Jews who had formed a party against the apostle, among whom were Salam bi Abdul Haq al Nadir. Um, he has been assassinated, this is sort of chronology of his placement here is off. Uh, okay, so that's the that's yeah. And 20 seconds. All right. So, okay, let me just go. Let me just go on. Okay. So, Sari Bukhari. Sari Bukhari, William Fu, Book 52, Number 280. Okay. So it says here, Abu Said um, Kudri went when the tribe of Bani Karaisi was ready to accept Sad's judgment. Allah's apostle sent for Sad, who was near to him. Sad came riding a donkey. And when he came near Allah's apostle. Okay, thank you very much. Sta- okay, can I notice? Some? No. Imam Ghazali, Imam Ghazali, that many people know, he was a scholar. So what happened? He used to carry all of his. He used to carry all of his books with him. And then what happened? He realized when the bandits stole his books that his knowledge was not in books. His knowledge is that which he kept in his head. Now the topic was, and he failed to kind of demonstrate that the Prophet Muhammad was violent. And there's many instances where I could show you that he was not and he was peaceful. Let's look. You can't throw stones when your house is made out of glass. Your house will shatter. Luke, it mentions in the Gospel of Luke, Jesus said, Bring thine enemies that wish not that I rule over them, that I may cut off their head. What did Jesus say? I have not come for peace, rather I have come for the sword. Jay Smith, one of the most prolific polemic speakers in Hyde Park Corner ever knows. He conceded that the Old Testament, the God of the New Testament, Jesus, uh, who they say is the God of the Old Testament, was far more violent than the, uh, any violence you find in the Quran. Now this is Jay Smith saying it. So I think I've demonstrated in that very short I'm time, sorry. according to the Bible, that I'm Jesus sorry. is violent. When he comes back, when he comes back, it says that he will kill and obliterate people. 
This is what it says in Revelation. It says two swords will come out of his mouth. Now these swords aren't words. These swords aren't words. If you go back to the Old Testament when it talks about the Amamlekites, Amal uh, even up to today there is belief that the Amamlekites are lawful to kill based on what the Old Testament said. The Old Testament sanctioned the death of babies, children, trees, the burning of crops. It's a low level discussion, I apologize. I apologize, I did not want to get into this kind of discussion. My Christian brethren, forgive me, this was not my intention. I'm only resorting to what he wanted to engage me in. On the other hand, I think that Jay, while he has admitted that uh, the Violence in the Old Testament is much greater than in the Quran, and these are his words, which are written, which I've written down as soon as he spoke them. He, he, he seems to think that the New Testament presents a different picture of morality, and we should guard against this. He brought me actually greetings from our good friend uh, James White, and James White uh, uh, has written in his book *The God Who Justifies* on page uh, 61. Um, in response to those Christians who may think, okay, that was the God of the Old Testament, now in, in the New Testament things are different. In response, White has this to say, there is only one God, and the God of the Old Testament is identical in every way to the God of the New.